Welcome to the Askeville Assembly of God Sermon Podcast. We're so glad you've taken the time to listen, and we pray this message from our pastors will be a blessing on your life this week. Today, I want to talk to you for a few minutes on how do we live? How do we walk this thing out? How do we walk all of these values that we've talked about for several weeks? How do we walk it out? And I I feel very... uh, I like application sermons. I want to tell you exactly, like, we just need these five things. I mean, last week I gave you a list of, like, things that every one of us could do. 15 minutes in prayer. Um, we could all go visit monthly, some, go visit somebody monthly. Uh, we could all make a connection a day. That's just a text message of some sort, just reaching out, encouraging somebody, posting on Facebook maybe. Uh, a teaching a week. Can't, I think we all can read a chapter in a book. I mean, it wouldn't hurt you to, to learn something new no matter how, uh, where we're at in our lives. Uh, if all of us would focus on one lost person instead of trying to reach all of Bertie, but we would all reach one. Do you understand how much, uh, how much impact we would have if each one of us would reach one? And so I tried to make like some practical things very, very easily, very easy for us because small things make a big difference. If you'll dream big, but start small, you'll see great things come to pass all the time. We kind of really want application, application, application. But today, what I want you to understand is I, today, I'm, what I'm interested in is evidence that you are walking with Jesus and that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk to you today about what evidence is, the evidence of connection to the vine. The first thing there would be evidence is there's going to be evidence of spiritual fruit. You will have spiritual fruit in your life, spiritual fruit. The second thing is you're going to have is there should be saved souls in the house. People who are, who are lost should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's something that should take place. That's the evidence of being connected to the vine. Today, I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to read for a few moments, and then we're going, to, we're going to take communion together. But I want to talk to you about how to walk it out. But what I don't want to do is to tell you how to walk it out. <laughs> okay. I want to tell you what to walk out. I don't want to tell you how to do it. Because here's the thing. I can tell you how I want you to do it, but that may not be what you need to do. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. What I can tell you is that there ought to be fruit in your life, and you ought to be doing something. But I don't want to sit around and tell you what. When Jesus left, he didn't tell us what. He, told, I mean, he didn't tell us how. He told us what. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them all that I've commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and until all of us are, are known. That's what he, he commands us to go do that. Now, how do you do that? Some of you do that differently than the way I do that. Some of you do it differently than the Jarvises are going to be doing it. Some of you have done it differently over the last 50 years of your ministry. Things that are different are not wrong. They are not bad. And you probably should keep your eyes on Jesus. Jesus and not each other because number one, if you compare yourself to someone else, you may not do as good a job at what their, it is their job. You may not do as good of a job at what is someone else's job. So keep your eyes off of other people. Also, if you get uh, connected to your gift, don't judge everybody else by what you're gifted at. Do what you've been called to do and let everybody else deal with the way they're going to do things, okay? The more you look at other people is the less you're looking at the, the, the lamb and the more frustrated you're going to get. So keep our eyes on Jesus. So how do we walk these things out? Ephesians chapter 5 breaks up into four beautiful walks. The first thing he says is walk in love. The second thing he says is walk in the light. The third thing he says is walk in wisdom. And the fourth thing is walk in submission. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today. But before I can get into the scripture, I just want you to know something right now. Many of you in this room, you may be very new to Jesus. Some of you may have been around Jesus for a long time. And you feel like... You feel like you don't really know what's expected of you or you don't really know what to do next. And I just, I need you from the bottom of my heart, I want you to hear something from me. You already have everything you need. You have everything you need. You don't need a supplement. You don't need a secondary. You don't, Jesus has already died for you. Salvation has been offered. Being filled with the Spirit is your opportunity every single minute of your life. God Almighty has already created you. There's breath in your lungs. Every, there's a word of God that tells you everything he's expecting of you. If you have everything you need already given to you, you don't need a, a preacher to yell at you every single week. You don't need that. I'm glad you show up, and I'm glad, I hope I'm helpful to you. But you don't need that. The Spirit of God is with you. Now, the Spirit of God also tells you that you need a church. I don't know if that's ever popped into your head, but it never said you needed a preacher. Thank you. Thanks for the rest of y'all being quiet. My wife can say it, okay? 
The Bible doesn't say you need a preacher. It says you need a church. We need each other. I was reminded this morning of the power of sitting around with other believers. You are reminded that you're not the only one going through junk. If we were to do a testimony this morning, how many of you are going through junk this morning? I think all of us would wave our hands. Amen? But we forget. We think it's, we're all alone. We think nobody cares. We're all alone. Nobody else is going through anything. And the truth is we're all surrounded by junk. I could use a stronger word, but I'm, I'm going to say junk for now. Number one, you have all you need to succeed. But secondly, you got help too. Thank God for the church. You're not alone. You have all you need alone, but you also got help. Ephesians chapter five. Paul has told us what the church ought to do and now he's gonna tell us who we ought to be in the midst of it. Therefore, be imitators of God. Jesus said, I never do anything I didn't see my father do. I never say anything I didn't hear my father say. He says, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Walk in love the way Christ did. A fragrant, oh, now listen, I wanted to just say four lines in this and move on, but this is thick stuff. So when you, when you get time this week, I want you to come back, okay? Because Jesus was a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Jesus' sacrifice is before God at all times, and that's why he can look at us with love because of what Christ already did on our behalf. Now, sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. Now, that's not the point of my sermon, but I just got to tell you, sexual immorality, listen, let me tell you what it's connected to. Verse 4, let there be no filthiness nor foolish talk nor crude talking, joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now, just by the way, he did not like change his opinion on these things. If you are in sexual immorality, understand you have been cut from the list going into heaven. This is not a joking matter. This is not a small thing. You must get control over this part of your life. If you have allowed your sexual impurity to become such an idol in your life that you are coveting what everybody else has and you are not being holy, understand Jesus did not change his opinion on sexual immorality. Jesus is not softer than the God of the Old Testament. You need to get control over that. You need to repent. You need to confess. You need to get deliverance over that part of your life because covetousness is very important because it is idolatry. It says crude joking. I grew up thinking that joking was bad and that's all I ever wanted to do was joking, joke. But you have to be mindful of your words. What kind of jokes are you making? Are you devaluing others? Are you devaluing what God has made? Covetous are idolaters. They have no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For being of these things, the wrath of God comes up, uh, comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Praise God. Light is offered to you. You can walk in the light. And that's what we must do in this church because he says next, first, walk in love. Now he says, walk as children of light for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Expose them to the light. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it said, that means anything that is out in the light, I mean, the truth is what sets us free. Everything must be brought out in the light. And understand this, even if you are hiding things, eventually it will be brought to the light. So the best thing for you to do is to bring it out on your terms. Bring it out and let God do something on your terms. Let there be a possibility of redemption and not just revealing. Come on, somebody. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. If you will wake up, Christ will shine on you. If you will confess, if you will bring it to the light, he will shine on you. Verse 15, look carefully then how you walk the third walk 
not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most, make the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand that this is the will of the Lord. This is the will of the Lord for you. Do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. Now there's, there's two Just real quick, there's two ways of looking at that. Remember they were on Acts chapter two when they were filled with the spirit, everybody on the outside said, these these guys must be drunk. And Peter, like the opening to his sermon is a weird, it's an awkward way to open the first sermon after Pentecost, but he's like, hey, we're not drunk like you think, okay? All right, there ain't enough Thunderbird in Jerusalem to get this many folks plastered by 9.30 in the morning. That's what Peter's opening line was. And so he steps out and he begins to preach. Well, this is an obvious connection here. The second connection that is also here, they're in Ephesus and they're full of Athenian gods in Ephesus. And so what he's probably doing is actually doing a comparison between uh, the God of wine, Dionysius, and God Almighty, Jesus Christ. And I just thought that was fascinating, you know, over the last couple of weeks or whatever. But um, uh, here's the thing, we, have, we will always be compared or we will always be related to what some people see as gods. But I can tell you Dionysius is only chaos and Jesus is only glory. And so we do not need drink. We didn't need drink to begin with. We do not need drink now and we won't need drink until we get to heaven and drink it fresh with him. I was hoping for a couple more AG amens, but you know what, it's fine, all right? I'm just telling you right now, if you think you need drink, you need Jesus more. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. We ought to talk to one another as if we were melody harmonizing with one another. Give thanks always and everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lastly, submitting to one another out of reference for God. So the fourth walk is that we walk together. We must submit to one another out of reverence for God. You are able. You've got all that you need to succeed spiritually. You've got everything you need to make it to heaven and you've got everything you need to do what God's called you to do. You are not less than, you are not broken beyond compare. You are not unable to do what God has called you. In fact, he will never call you to do something that he doesn't also eventually equip you to do. So if you are walking around thinking, I'm broken, my past is too big, I don't have any way of fixing what I'm going through, I want you to know today, you don't need anything. You don't need a preacher to commend you. You don't need a group to go into. You don't need a, a second book. The Bible is all you need to understand the truth of God. You have all that you need through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. You have all this because you have Jesus. Now, Jesus, he's the model If you want to know what you should do in your life, do what Jesus did. Do what Jesus would do. Ask yourself every morning, Lord, if you were me, what would you do? And then like, go do it. Don't just ask him how. Don't just ask him for the wisdom. Ask him for the courage to walk it out. Then go out and do what he's called you to do. The first thing is he's the model. He's the one you should be trying to do everything in your life to become more like. The second thing he is, is he's the source. You say to yourself, I don't have the ability, but you have a direct line to God. You can walk right boldly into his throne and you can ask him, God, I need more love. I need more patience. I need more courage. I need more power. I need more faith. I need more time. I need more help. I I need whatever it is. And you walk right into the king of glory's room and you ask him for those things and he will give it because he is your source. If you need more love to love somebody else, Jesus is the source of all kinds of love. If you, whatever it is that you need, go into the throne. The, th- the third thing is he's the recipient. Remember what he said? He said, when you do anything for the least of these, you do it unto me. That means the next time that irritating cousin of yours that you have to hang out with, I don't have any, but that the people that you have to deal with that you need extra grace, Amanda calls them EGRs, extra grace required. You know what I'm saying? When you have those EGRs in your life and you know that you should still be Jesus to those people, you say to yourself, just go ahead and and have a schizophrenic moment you change that person into Jesus when you go to Thanksgiving dinner and they start chiming up about all that took place in the election blah 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 and you just you just sit there and you just stare at them and you just see Jesus sitting over there picture a crown of thorns on their head picture the sacrifice that was made so that you could be forgiven and you do the same thing in that moment And you serve that person. You put the instant mashed potatoes in their plate. And you bless them. You tell them it was good to see them. Not because it was good to see them, but because it would be good to see Jesus. And Jesus is there. 
When you do for the least of these, you do it for him. And here's the thing. Here's the great thing. Sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get weirded out when people give me glory unnecessarily, you know, when I get credit. But here's the thing. As a believer, I don't get no credit. All of it goes to Jesus. Don't worry about that awkward part. Just give it all to God. I was reminded this week that when people say, Pastor, that was a good word this morning, I need to respond with, it sure was. Like, it ain't mine. <laughs> what is so wonderful, I've been, I've been racking my brain about how to say a few of these things this week, and what I kept coming back to was, if you'll just read the word, Webb, that's all they need. And I want you to understand that. I wish I could get that through to all of our hearts. If you have the word of God, you have all that you need. All that you need. Be filled with the Spirit, who is supposed to be the one who teaches us everything Jesus teaches and points us back to him. Hey, maybe you've been filled with the Spirit many years ago. Remember Acts chapter 19, verse 2, he says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we have not heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. First of all, there is a secondary thing to salvation and it is being filled with the Holy Spirit but in that being filled you should be being filled as it says in Ephesians chapter 5 as we read a while ago we are to be being filled it is a really weird tense in the Greek be is present being is like presenter I don't know it's a, and then filled is past tense and, and it means what it means. It, what it means is that you should be continuously and you should be over and over again and you should have already been. Be filled with the Spirit. If you want to know more of what God has for you, be filled with the Spirit. Now, that's the first thing. You are able by yourself. Let me say the second thing is you need to find a team. See, you have all that you need alone, but you are not the fullness of Jesus Christ alone. It might take two or three of you to make a good Jesus. You need other people. You need people who are gifted at things that you are not. You need to submit yourself. The word submit means to revoke what you want for what somebody else wants. If you lack confidence, ask God for it. In fact, if you lack confidence in an area, hey, some of you in the room, you may say to yourself, I mentioned like do one visitation a, a, a month and all of you just like, you know, broke out in hives. Like, if you, if you had a, a, an allergic reaction to just the comment of going to someone's house and making them feel comfortable, then this is what I think you should do. This is how we find a team. This is how we are better together. Hey, Pastor Randy, you meet, like, you go to like 20 people's houses every single week on a visitation. Pastor, could I, could I come with you one time and shadow you? Let him do all the talking. Let him do all the work. Watch him. Now, there are other people. I'm just mentioning Randy because he's in the front row. But there are other people who do visitation. If you would like to get better at that, ask somebody who's a pro at it and go with them. You understand? Yeah. Okay, how about this? All right. How many of you want to reach the lost? How many of you want to make a difference and reach the lost? Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you also. Hey, Sue is going to Ecuador next year. It is easy to do missions in another country. It's not easy to be in another country. It's easy to do missions in another country because you ain't going to ever see those folks again. Food line is a lot more daunting than being in Ecuador. Right? Right? Okay, here, but here's another thing. How many of you don't want to go to Ecuador? Go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead. How many of you don't want to go to Ecuador? Uh, Jennifer is doing, she's over there, so she's in, usually in that general area. Um, uh, but Jennifer, she, she does bless for tea, which is blessing people right here in our own backyard. And she always needs help uh, delivering things and, and taking things to people's homes. Miss Lynn, could you ever use some help? taking some food out okay if you would like to do if you would like to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ there are opportunities for you and you say to yourself well I don't want to have I don't, I don't know if I can do that I don't know if I, well find the thing that you can do and link with somebody who's already done it and done a pretty good job at it if you'd like to preach better if you'd like to teach better if you would like to understand the word of God better ask somebody to spend a week with you in devotions and have them help you someone who already knows the word of God and have them help you understand how to dig in deeper but don't spend your whole life off by yourself thinking everything can get done and your prayer no the reason he gave us the church was to equip one another to build up one another to help one another to that's why we need each other so submit yourself to other people revoke what it is your pride or whatever so that you can submit yourself to someone who knows something better than you amen. amen maybe you need to learn something maybe you're ignorant in an area but you're afraid to say that go to somebody who's better at it than you can I just tell you right now one thing that I wish I could get I need to do a whole sermon on it and I'm going to do this very quickly 
But I wish I could take a, a month of Sundays to have the people in this church who tithe regularly tell about the financial miracles that they've seen take place. And those of you who feel like you can't afford to do it, you would realize that you can't afford not to tithe. Because when you honor God in your finances, he will honor you and take care of you in ways you've never understood before. And I'm not telling you that because we're, we're in a bad spot or anything. We're not in a bad spot. But I'm just telling you right now, if you want to honor God in all the areas of your life, the fir- one of the first places you need to honor him in is your finances. And when you do that, you'll see the blessings of God pour out on you like you've never seen before. And if you don't believe me, I I can tell you my story, but ask some of these people that you know they must be tithers. Ask some of their story, how they financially, I tell you what, do it different. Look at somebody and see if they financially made it. Just scratch your chin a little bit and say, I think they probably are a little better financially than I am. And go ask them if they haven't honored the Lord in their finances. Who's doing well? Ask to see how. Ask for help. When you hear no from that person you ask help from, keep asking others. Serve together changes everything. If you want to know how to be better at something, go and serve beside that person. If you struggle in your prayer life, hey, we have a prayer meeting every Monday night. Come and hear other people pray. I would tell you that's one of the blessings of my life. I miss the holy moans that I would hear in the prayer meetings on Monday nights in this sanctuary over here. I never heard words, but I'd walk in and it would sound like, Sound like ghosts in the room. Ooh, hallelujah. They, they, those things, and I'm gonna tell, that was not me making fun. That is a blessing to me because I heard them groan in the spirit when I had no words for my prayers. When I didn't know what to pray for, I heard people that would go in there and I would hear them call out their children's name and their grandchildren's name and to pray for the future of their church. It's a blessing to hear other people pray and to know how to pray and to learn how to do that. Everything you need to succeed and get better at where you are right now has been offered by this one church. (laughs) Thank you. If you want to make a change in the next generation, BACA would love volunteers for you to walk it up and down those halls and pray for over these young people this year. Come warm up some lunches and hand it to some young people and tell them they're pretty. You have no idea what it might change their life. I know some of y'all are just sitting on so much cash, you're like Donald the the, the duck um, with all the money. We've had $70,000 donated for that school down there. $70,000 over the last six or seven months. That's amazing, isn't it? There are people who believe in the mission of BACA. So exciting. Now, we're only $930,000 short. And school can't start Thursday if we don't get, I'm just kidding, this is a joke, okay. God's gonna bring it in, God's gonna bring it in. We haven't lost sight on the fact that we, we're gonna build a sanctuary over here too. Listen, God has it, and God's gonna bring it in on his time, but we gotta be faithful as well, amen. I know this to be the case, that my life changed when I started serving in church. If I hadn't have served, I wouldn't have stayed. The more time I spend with other people, the more trust that gets built. Do you want to know how to have relationships? Some of you in this room, you feel lonely. You don't feel like anybody cares about you. And I'm going to tell you right now, it has to do with where you're spending your time. Look, I I love serving the Lord. I've been one of those kids that pick up six chairs in my arms before I could even fit. Like I was was showing off for all the girls here, you know what I'm saying? Because I really thought that the more chairs I could put in my arms, the prettier girl I would get. It worked, but... (laughs) I believe in serving, but I also understand my life was changed because people looked me in my eye and recognized that I was a person and loved me and prayed for me and cared for me. A lot of you in this room, you feel like you're lonely, but you're not putting in the time in relationships. You're going through difficulty and you feel alone. The devil has convinced you you're alone, but you have not done the work to make sure that you have friends and you're ready to blame everybody else for it. You will have fruit where you invest your time. Time with is never time wasted. And not simply time at church. I want you to understand that. Being in this room doesn't build relationships. Being across the table does. Being there when they need you most. 
You want to build time. You want to build trust. You want to build value. You, need to, you have to have these things that have relationship. You have to have humility. You have to believe that somebody else has something to offer. Submission, to revoke your will for someone else's. If you want to witness to the lost, you got to build relationships. Tell them Jesus loves them. Hey, and don't fix the church hurt. You can't do that. Let them have their own church hurt. Let them keep it and pet it all they want. You reveal to them Jesus and the fact that he cares and loves them. Then tell your story. Time. If you want to grow, spend time where you want to see it. So in closing, be imitators of God. Be wise. Make the most of every opportunity. Where are you spending your time? You need to spend it with people. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us that God makes all things beautiful in time. We want all things beautiful right now. God makes all things beautiful in time. Make the most of every opportunity, Ephesians 5 tells us. Um, The most important thing you need outside of Jesus is good relationships, and it matters where you spend that time. Ephesians 5 tells us that. So what's getting in the way of life-giving relationships for you? What are you letting be more important than friendships? Is it humility? Do you honestly believe that most people don't have anything to offer you? Is it distractions? Do you have trust issues? I understand. If I heard your story, I would know why you have trust issues. But in order for you to be enriching to the the body of believers, you're gonna have to slide that to the middle of the table and say, Lord, you're gonna have to deal with those. I'm not saying you, that they're not warranted. They are warranted. Your story would tell me. But trust issues are gonna keep you away from the life-giving relationships that come through the church. Maybe you don't see value in other people. Hey, humble yourself. Everybody has value. Everyone. And I don't just mean like in the, in the God sense that he made them and he died for them. Yeah, that's there. But I'm talking about everybody has something to offer you. And when you think that no one does, you understand how arrogant that makes you? I love people because everyone has something unique to them. Humble yourself. Who do you need to seek out? Where is the area of your life that you need to make better? Who do you need to seek out for help? What do you need to stop? What idols have you allowed in your life that you need to get rid of those so that you can have the life that comes from Jesus? Thank you for joining the Ask Will Assembly of God sermon podcast. For more information on our ministry, please visit our website at askyoubillassembly.com 